I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Syrian Arab Republic. Thank you, Mr. President. My country, Syria, while regrets the adoption of the blatantly biased and unbalanced draft resolution for the reasons that I have outlined in my statement in the morning plenary meeting, Syria thanks all countries that did not vote in favor of that resolution, which is a responsible position that upholds the principles of the United Nations and the provisions of the Charter, a position that rejects the policies of intervention and promoting chaos in international relations, especially as this chaos is associated with constructive chaos. Also, Syria, government and people expect the United Nations organization, as well as member states, to be aiding Syria in confronting a culture of extremism and terrorism, whether its origin is in Israel or it is anchored in an ideology of fundamental or Qaeda principles. Syria expects the promotion of inclusive national dialogue as a way for a peaceful resolution of the crisis under the six-point plan. It expects bring a pressure to bear on parties that embrace violence and terrorism to cease from that. The government of Syria, for its part, has committed to cease violence and has withdrawn heavy weapons from cities since the 12th of April last to demonstrate its commitment to the first item in the Kofi Annan plan. But the armed groups did not fulfill their commitments in, in, the, in those terms. Quite the opposite. Those groups exploited this government commitment in order to fill the security vacuum emanating from the cessation of violence by the government forces. They tried to control uh, population neighborhoods by force of arms and using civilians as human shields. Those groups intensified their assaults against civilians, military personnel, and state institutions supported in those actions by some parties, both governments and groups in our region and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, the states that call for successive meetings of the Security Council, the General Assembly and Human Rights Council actually aim to provide political coverage for the actions of the armed terrorist groups operating in Syria and to cover their crimes against the Syrian population in terms of aggressions against uh, civilians, public property, private property, and killing of qualified personnel and, and abduction of citizens in return for paying a ransom and the bombing of electric power stations and oil and gas uh, transportation lines and stealing agricultural crops and attacking police stations and burning hospitals and clinics. Some parties are relentlessly seeking, ladies and gentlemen, to harm the dignity of some segments of the Syrian population who are uh, encouraged to leave the country and then convert them to imprisoned refugees in camps, the least of which could be described as detention camps, where their anguish and dilemma is exploited in cheap bidding markets and political blackmail under false slogans provided to them. And this is, by the way, uh, promises that have not been delivered as yet. 
let alone the fact that some of these camps have been converted into military centers where terrorists are being assembled in order to prepare them for sending them later to Syria in order to commit their horrendous crimes as happened in the past and as what is going now, this very moment, in the city of Aleppo. The establishment of a national reconciliation ministry within the minister, uh, the uh, cabinet of Syria, is a testimony to the genuine desire of the Syrian government to ensure the success of the inclusive national dialogue among all segments of the Syrian population in order to achieve a peaceful resolution of the current crisis. And this is precisely was set forth in the six-point plan. What is strange, ladies and gentlemen, that the European Union has imposed on the Minister of National Reconciliation himself sanctions only a few days after he assumed his portfolio, despite the fact that this minister who is responsible for this important uh, ministry is from the Syrian opposition groups. The foreign intervention in Syrian affairs has changed the demands, legitimate demands of the Syrian population to put it in third rank or fourth in terms of priorities. And this foreign intervention, foreign intervention has made these reforms turn them into um, armed rebellion against the Syrian state that is operated from outside Syria and unfortunately from some Arab countries. My colleague, the Saudi ambassador, has put forward a totally erroneous picture of what is happening in my country. And I'm not going to address all those mistakes. But I, sh I shall be exclusive in addressing the remarks that he made regarding our brother ref Palestinian refugees in Al Yarmouk refugee camp in Damascus. And I say first, this refugee camp hosts our uh, brethren Palestinian refugees who have been expelled by the Israeli occupation authorities from their homeland between 1948 and 1967. But this refugee camp has become a camp that was also Syrian citizens who are double the number of Palestinian refugees living there. And therefore, this refugee camp does not host exclusively our brethren Palestinian refugees. Two, the representatives of Palestinian organizations in that refugee camp issued an official statement in which they indicated that those who fired at the camp are members of armed terrorist gangs who sought to plunge the Palestinian refugees living in Syria into the armed rebellion against the Syrian state. And therefore, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, who are sponsoring those terrorist armed groups, are conspiring against the safety, well-being, and stability of our Palestinian refugees, brothers living in Syria. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we said that this Saudi Qatari uh, draft resolution actually serves the Israeli interests that target Palestinian refugees both inside Palestine and outside it. Also, what would my Saudi colleague would say about the brutal armed practices of the Saudi army against the peaceful uh, reform demands of Saudi citizens in both Katif and Awamiya regions in Saudi Arabia. Could he explain to this distinguished assembly what are the Saudi armed forces doing in Bahrain? My colleague, the Saudi the representative said that he was submitting the draft resolution on behalf of the Arab group. This is not true. As you are aware, two Arab states did not support this draft resolution. And therefore, the claim that this draft resolution was submitted on behalf of the Arab group is a false claim. It is totally unfounded. It is indeed regrettable, ladies and gentlemen. It is really strange that my colleague, the Saudi representative, would put words 
in the mouth of Mr. Kofi Annan and to give strange interpretations to the demand of Mr. Annan in order not to extend his mission. In this regard, we express our regret towards the fact that Mr. Annan submitted his resignation. And let me reiterate that Syria has all along declared and proved its full commitment to implement the six-point plan of the United Nations envoy and cooperated with the group of observers in order to achieve the desired goals of that plan. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, Israeli state terrorism was the source of spreading the culture of terrorism across the globe. It is perhaps appropriate as was said by the Israeli delegate that some Olympics, Olympic Games should be organized, but exclusively for terrorism. And then Israel would be awarded the top prize, the first position. And in honor of that win, the anthem of shedding the blood of innocent civilians in celebration of that terrorism, the scandals of Israel in violating the provisions of charter are difficult to count here inside Israel, is Palestine and outside are well documented in the archives of the United Nations, uh, assassinating of peace activists, members of those countries have been of um, countries that sponsored this draft resolution, hijacking civilian planes and killing scores of Palestinian, Lebanese, and Syrian citizens in the Golan. The ultimate of hypocrisy and misinformation was with the remarks of the Israeli delegate when he talked about fear of chemical weapons. He ignored the fact that Israel itself did not accede to the uh, Convention on Chemical Weapons and refuses to implement resolution on the Middle East of 1995, 1995 regarding the review of the NPT, that resolution which called for establishing a weapon zone free of all weapons of mass destruction. And as a result, Israel is not a member of the NPT. And therefore, Israel and its delegate should rather remain silent because their mere remarks about that is a shame for them. Israel has in its arsenal, 300 nuclear weapons. Germany has added, thankfully, six submarines that are capable and empower Israel to fire those uh, nuclear uh, missiles. And uh, by the way, Germany is a sponsor of this draft resolution. This makes me conclude that there is a Western, Israeli, and some Arab alliance here, let the Israeli delegate maintain his as offered assistance, which is misleading, to himself. The people of Syria is not in need of these poisons. The people of Syria waits impatiently the liberation of Syrian Golan from the vices of the Israeli occupation, which is supported by many member states that sponsored the draft resolution. Let me remind the Israeli delegate that the international law is on our side and not on the side of the Israeli policies, irrespective of the uh, thrust and purposes of those Israeli policies. They, these are policies of aggression, policies of occupation, that occupied some 50% of the agenda of this uh, General Assembly since the creation of the World Organization. The irresponsible Israeli policies that are referred to would eventually lead to 
further escalation, violence, terrorism in our region as well as in the whole world. It is not possible for what is called international community to fight terrorism in one area while encourages the Israeli state-sponsored terrorism in other areas. For all these reasons, gen ladies and gentlemen, let me say that the draft resolution, which was sponsored by the West, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar against my country, serves only the interests of Israel and its aggression. I thank you, sir. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Uruguay.